Hello everyone, this is Kevin Sir here and today we will discuss or learn about the creation of an empire. So this is a chapter of history. Now what we shall learn in this chapter are the followings. We will learn about establishment of Mughal Empire. If you remember, in the previous class, that is in the first term, we discuss about the Delhi Sultanate, where different dynasties had ruled Delhi. And the last rule, ruler of the Delhi Sultanate was Ibrahim Lodi. And his defeat in the Battle of Panipat in the year 15. 26 ended the Afghan rule and started or established the Mughal rule in India and he was defeated by whom by Babur and then we shall also discuss about India on the eve of Babur's invasion like the political condition of India how he defeated the Indian kingdoms then we'll also discuss about Babur's achievement then different Mughal rulers such as Humayu, Akbar, Jahangir, Sajahan, Aurangzeb. Then we'll also discuss about what important events that took place during the Mughal period. The wars, their way of administration, how they manage and how they look after the people all these things we learn in this chapter so now we'll discuss about the establishment of mughal empire so the mughal empire was founded or established by babur in the year 1526 now before that we must know that Babur was born as Zahiruddin Muhammad in the year 1483 in Uzbekistan. Now that was a part of Central Asia. Soon after defeating few kings in Central Asia, Babur decided to march towards India. And Babur had learned that the kings in India mostly Rajputs and as well as the Turks and the Afghan there were uh, there was disunity among the Indian kingdoms so taking this as an opportunity and as an advantage he marched towards India and at that time India was under the King Ibrahim Lodi and many of Ibrahim Lodi's noble did not like Ibrahim Lodi for his policies. So his own uncle, Dalot Khan Lodi, invited Babur to come and attack India. And as a result, in 1526 AD, Babur came to India and defeated Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Panipat. After defeating Ibrahim Lodi, Babur established the Mughal rule in India. He did not stop there. Soon, he defeated Rana Sangha in the very next year in the Battle of Kanwa in the year 50, 1527 AD. And then two years later, in the year 1529, he also defeated some Afghan nobles of Bihar and that's how Baba extended his kingdom in India. Now we'll discuss about India on the eve of Babur's invasion. So when Baba was about to attack or invade India, in India there was 
struggle for political supremacy among several powers. That means many kings were fighting among each other so that they could become the sole authority of India and be the most powerful. Then Delhi at the time was ruled by Ibrahim Lodi and he lacked power and also he was not friendly with Rajput rulers and as well as with the Afghan and Turk nobles and because of this he was invited by Dalat Khan Lodi to attack India who Babur was invited and at the time Dalat Khan was the governor of Punjab so even when Babur came to attack India Dalat Khan Lodi did not stop Babur and as a result a fierce battle was fought at Panipat the first battle in the year 1526 then Sindh a province that had become independent from the Delhi Sultanate but there was no central authority to control Sindh and as a result there was complete chaos and lawlessness in Sindh then Kashmir was in the state of anarchy that means same thing in Kashmir there was no one to rule and there was complete lawlessness so this was the condition of India on the eve of Barber's invasion now so we discuss about what India on the eve of Barber's invasion so we discuss about Delhi how Delhi was Sindh Punjab Kashmir now another important kingdom was Mewar now Mewar was ruled by Rajput kings and some of the famous ruler or outstanding ruler of the Mewar kingdom were Rana Kumba Rana Sangha and Maharana Pratap now Rana Kumba was one of the great general and also a scholar and he was very well versed in different subjects like logic grammar mathematics metaphysics and also political science he took great interest in architecture also and during his rule he constructed many wells and canals and even promoted agriculture and one of its famous architect was the Javastamba that is Tower of Fame at Chittor. Then the next king Rana Sangha he was also a very important ruler like Maharana Kumba and during his rule Rana Sangha he defeated Mahmud II the ruler of Malwa and also he, he imprisoned him Mahmud II at the fort of Chittor but however he lost his battle that is in the battle of Kanwa he lost to Babur in the year 1527 and that's how the Rajput kingdom also came under Babur now Babur's empire now after de defeating many kings in India Babur almost controlled the entire Gangetic plain now in this Gang Gangetic plain the kingdom were Bihar after Bihar Mewar Bengal Punjab Agra and the most important one Delhi and all these records of Babur is uh, can be found in his own diary because Babur wrote or maintained a diary in which he recorded all his impressions of his kingdoms and that diary is in fact is also a source through which we 
knew about Babur's rule in India and it's known as Tuski Babri or Babur Nama and this is considered as one of the finest autobiographical writing of any king. So what is that? Babur Nama or Tuski Babri. That was a diary, a diary written by Babur himself. And at last, Babur, he died in the year 1528 AD. Now, he did not die in the battlefield. In fact, he was poisoned by his own men. And that's how Babur's rule came to an end. And then his son, Humayun, ascended the throne. Now, <clears throat> after the death of Babur, his son, his eldest son, Humayun, came and sat on the throne in the year 1530. Now, as you can see, the dates, four dates are there. That is from 1530 to 1540. And the next one is from 1555 to 1556 AD. We'll discuss that, why we have two dates here. <clears throat> Now, when Humayun sat on the throne, he had to face a lot of trouble from different quarters. That is, his own brother were hostile to him. And apart from that, he had to face many rebellions in Malwa and Gujarat. And for that, he could not establish a strong power. And one of his greatest enemy at the time was Sher Shah, who later on took the name Sher Shah Suri. Now Sher Shah was an Afghan ruler of Bihar and he too was very ambitious to rule Delhi. And thus, in the year 1539, he defeated Humayun in the battle of Chosa and the very next year, in 1540 AD, he again defeated Humayun in the Battle of Kannauj. After these two battles, Humayun had no kingdom, kingdom and he had to flee. And he wandered for about 15 years here and there, especially in the western part of India, that is Kabul, Afghanistan, in those places. Then, after Seja Shuri died in the year Sorry, the date got rough. 1545 AD. And after Seisha's death, his son sat on the throne, but they were weak. And as a result, the kingdom created by Seisha started to break down. And taking this advantage, Humayun again came and recaptured Delhi in the year 1555 AD but he could not rule for a long time this time and he died the very next year in the year 1556 and the cause cause of his death was that he fell down from the staircase of his library and thus Humayun's rule came to an end and his son Akbar came and sat on the throne. So now let's recall what we have learned. So we, we know that in this chapter, we have learned that Babur founded the Mughal Empire. Babur defeated Ibrahim Lodi in the first battle of Panipat in the year 1526 AD. Then he also defeated Rana Sangha in the battle of Kanwa in 1527 AD. Then he also defeated the Afghan nobles of Bihar in 1529 and Babur died in the year 1530 AD. Well, I have made a mistake in the very first video that Babur died in 1528. I said that's wrong. Actually, Babur died in 1530 AD. We also learned that after Babur's death, his eldest son, Humayun, sat on the throne in the year 1530 but he had to face many rebellion 
then he was defeated by Sher Shah in two battles Battle of Chosa and Battle of Kannauj then after that he had to wander for 15 years without any kingdom then in the year 1555 he recaptured Delhi and in the year 1556 AD Humayun died now after this at the end I'll give you a few questions very short answers you have to write and make sure that you write them in your fair copy